So electronegativity, let's talk about the underlying idea behind it before I give you a definition, okay? Electronegativity has a lot um, has a lot to do with what you learned in physical science about elect about bonding, okay? Um, there were two kinds of bonding you learned in physical science. What were they? Covalent and ionic. So electronegativity is all about describing covalent bonding. And what we're going to find out in this class is that bonding isn't so simple as simply covalent and ionic. Within covalent, there's a whole range of bonds. And there's even bonds that are not completely ionic or completely covalent. So instead of being black and white, it's shades of gray. Okay? So but electronegativity primarily deals with this theory or underlying idea about sharing of electrons or covalent. So if I have two atoms, we're going to call them A and B. Okay? I could call them Fred and Lucy, but I'm going to call them A and B. All right? They're going to share electrons. That's what you do with covalent bonding. Okay? They're going to share these two electrons. Okay, well, to share them, they both have to be kind of holding on to them, right? So they're both pulling on those electrons. All right? They both have an attraction to the electrons. The electrons have attraction, an attraction to both of those atoms. Well, if they're sharing them equally or pretty close to equally, then they both, A and B, both atom A, And atom B have the same electronegativity. Okay? So they're sharing them about the same. They both have the same electronegativity. Well, what if A and B get into a contest over these? And they're both pulling, but they're not pulling the same. That's kind of like what sport? Civil war. Like a civil war? Well, they're tug of war. Tug of war. Okay, I thought I, I thought I heard you say civil war. Gracious. All right. So let's say A is winning. And so most of the time, these electrons are over close to A. Okay. So A is pulling on those electrons more strongly than B. There, A is winning the tug of war. Therefore, atom A has more electronegativity. Than atom B. So the effect is A has the electrons over here most of the time. The model that explains it is electronegativity. Some force or energy that causes those electrons to be closer to A more than closer to B. Does that make sense? The behavior we can measure. The underlying model that explains why this behavior exists, that's where we get this what thing called electronegativity. You got that? Okay, I'm trying to make sure we reinforce this idea of what a model is. Well, suppose A is not the one that's winning. Suppose B, that, suppose it's B that's winning. The electrons are mostly over here instead of over across to A. What does that mean? Yeah, so now in this case then, atom B has more electronegativity. Okay, so then, what is this thing we call electronegativity? Well, it is a relative measure of how hard 
and atom poles on electrons that it shares with another atom. And just to make sure we're making the full circle here and our understanding, when electrons share atoms, what kind of bonding is that? Covalent. Okay. So look at your pattern, your periodic table pattern you did yesterday. Get out your big periodic table so you can figure out where these atoms are located on the periodic table. And let's say I'm combining sulfur and fluorine together. I'm going to combine sulfur and fluorine together. Okay, look at where they are on the periodic table. Look at where it fits in the pattern. And tell me who wins. Who wins a tug of war if it's sulfur and fluorine? chance for you to check yourself and check your understanding. Okay, Jacob? Get out your big periodic table and your test references. Get out your uh, illustration of the pattern of electronegativity we wrote down yesterday and figure out if sulfur and fluorine are combining together, who's winning the electron war? The tug of war.